We'll be talking about tree fruit for this lesson. The species we'll discuss will include apples, pears, cherries, peaches, nectarines, apricot, and plum. Peach and nectarine are listed together since the nectarine is simply a fuzzless peach and the care of each is the same. This lesson will cover planting and pruning. Planting of fruit trees is the same for all species. The method I will show you adds organic matter to a planting site. We will add organic matter to an area that is 10 feet across and not just the planting hole. Organic matter helps improve any soil. It increases aeration and the water infiltration rate for a clay soil and acts as a sponge in a sandy soil to hold water and nutrients. However, never add organic matter just to the planting holes. Roots do not like to go from one type of soil to another and may circle within the planting hole. Also, adding organic matter just to the planting hole in a clay type soil can result in a planting hole becoming a pot that can fill with water after planting due to heavy rain or irrigation. This can suffocate the roots and kill the plant. If you have limited room and cannot add organic matter to a large area, go back with the same soil that came out of the hole. If you do have room, let me show you how to add organic matter safely. First, fertilize the area according to soil test and then till the soil at least six inches deep. The tilled area should be 10 feet across. Add organic matter with the most being toward the center of the area and feathering out about two feet from the outside of the tilled area. Next, till the organic matter into the soil. The organic matter content will be higher in the center of the planting area or will gradually feather out from there. This will allow the roots to move gradually from soil with a high organic matter content to the amount naturally found in the soil. Roots will then develop without restrictions. You may want to then tarp the area so that a wet spring does not delay planting. It does not matter how much rain you receive if the planting area is tarped. You're able to plant the day you receive the plants. If you buy mail order plants, open the package immediately and make sure the roots are moist. Moisten the packing if it is not very moist and reclose the package. If the packing is dry, place the plants in a bucket of water so the roots can hydrate until you are ready to plant. If the plants won't be planted until the next day, hold them in a cool area overnight. Often just leaving them outside is fine. If several trees are to be planted, do not lay them out next to the planting hole before digging. Rather, place them all in a bucket of water. Remove each one as needed. Before planting, prune off any damaged and long roots. Do not twirl the long roots inside the planting holes. They will continue to circle and may damage the tree later in life. If it bothers you to cut off a long root, dig a trench for it so it does not circle. Next, plant the tree. Watch the depth of planting. The graft should be above ground level. If the graft is below ground, the top part of the tree may develop roots, which may allow the tree to grow much larger than you would like. Fruit trees are often grafted on the dwarfing root stocks, which keep the trees smaller than they would normally be. We will talk about dwarfing root stocks later. It is a good idea to mound soil in the center of the hole so the tree sits on that mound. Plant the tree several inches high and bring the soil up to the point where the roots flare. This will keep the tree from being too deep even if the mound settles. Add soil to the hole until it is about one half full. Fill the hole with water so that the soil settles around the roots resulting in good root soil contact. We want to avoid air pockets that will interfere with root development. Finish filling the hole with soil and add water a second time. Make sure the tree is set several inches above the soil line with soil brought up to the flare. If it is too deep, simply pull up on the tree before watering in. Fruit trees often need protection from deer. Deer can cause two major types of damage. The first is browsing, where they eat the leaves from the trees. I only have problems with deer eating the leaves from young trees as they leaf out in the spring. Other people have problems with older trees. The second type of damage is from the male deer trying to scrape the velvet from their antlers in late summer to early fall. They don't bother older trees, but can cause extensive damage to younger ones. In some cases, they can uproot trees planted the previous spring. So how do you protect them? In this photo, a circle of concrete reinforcing wire was placed around the tree. 
cut the lowest horizontal wire off so the prongs can be pushed into the soil. Further stabilize the wire by using tent pegs. Larger areas can be protected by using electric wires in two offset rows. Though a deer could easily jump over the fence in the photo, they won't try because they have poor depth perception and can't tell how far the inner fence is from the outer one. If your trees are too young to bear or do not have fruit for some other reason, there is no need to spray for insects unless you have borers or insects that attack leaves. However, there may be a need to use fungicides. If there is fruit, then insect control is in order. There are a few products available that can be used and are effective, but check the label to be sure your type of tree is listed. Also pay attention to how many sprays can be applied in one year. Common products for homeowners are Bonide Malathion, Bonide Fruit and Tree Plant Guard, and Bonide Fruit Tree Spray. Though seven can be used, spider mites often become a problem on apples if it is used. Seven kills mite predators. Also, seven can thin apple fruit if used soon after fruit set. Another method of controlling insects is bagging. These are two examples of bags that can be used. The one on the left is a lunch bag, which is also known as a three pound bag. The lunch bags are cut back to six inches long and a slit is cut to allow the bag to be pulled over the fruit and then pleated and tied shut. The bag on the right is known as a Japanese apple bag and already has a slit and a built-in twist tie making it more convenient to use. There is no need to spray the fruit for either insects or disease once the bag is attached. Leaf diseases may still need to be controlled as only the fruit is covered. The bag is placed over the fruit when it's about the size of a quarter. Remember that apples bear fruit in groups of five, and so four of those fruit would need to be removed. Apples do not color unless sunlight hits the fruit. For example, red delicious apples will not turn red, even by harvest, if they remain covered. Therefore, the bag should be moved about three weeks before harvest. There is an excellent video on how to bag fruit at the URL listed. That, well, that is it for this lesson. Next lesson will cover how to care for apple trees.